Good morning. It's Monday, June 26, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of hope for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Searching for Joy, Part 2, and our scripture is Philippians chapter 1, where the Apostle Paul writes, Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy, for you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. We ended yesterday's thoughts with the question, Can you really experience joy? We can all probably agree on the definition of joy. The main question is, what produces it? And how can we have joy in our everyday life continuously? I want to show you two realities about joy. First, the characteristics of our contemporary culture's stab at joy. Then tomorrow, the Apostle Paul's thinking. So let's dig in. Culture characteristic number one, we are alone. Philosopher Thomas Wolfe said, Loneliness is, and always has been, the central and inevitable experience of every man. (laughs) Won't that bless you? In the contemporary scene, we're isolated behind our air-conditioned walls. We're transfixed moth-to-light-like to our blaring computer games on smartphones and DVD players. We're protected from interruption by our straight-to-voicemail. Isolated from and insulated against human touch, we find out about ourselves from the nightly news, and the news is lonely. There's little joy in that mudville. Cultural characteristic number two, we are not only alone, we are assertive. From the first stamping of little two-year-old feet that don't want to go where mother said, to the constant mashing of the horn buttons on freeways, assertiveness is the America we've come to know and despise. Sacrifice and service have become foreign words in America. Corporate raids and takeovers make billions, and no longer does it matter what happens to the person on the assembly line or the family having to stand in the bread line for a handout. Cultural characteristic number three. We are alone, we are assertive, and we are ambivalent. Ambivalence is a strange development for a land of such passionate beginnings. America was born in the heart of people with fire in their bellies. There was a sense of right and wrong, of good and evil. Today's culture is as dependent upon the direction of the prevailing winds as on any code of morals or values. A newspaper columnist pointed out how the slide towards ambivalence has made us a nation of orphans where child guidance is concerned. Drew Edwards wrote, We are infinitely more comfortable dealing with each other in the gray vastness of how does it feel for you than in terms of right and wrong. One look at the status of our children and we know that what we're doing isn't working. Children need right and wrong. One of the reasons our children take drugs, take little interest in life, and take other students' lives is that they see no firmness of commitment to an ethic, ideals, or to each other. Options dominate our thinking. If I don't like this circumstance, I'll change it. If I can't change it, I'll go somewhere else where it feels better to me. I like you all right, but listen, if you do something that displeases me, I just might option you out with a 357 Magnum, or a divorce, or an abortion, or some cocaine, or even just a glance. Hey, I can take you or leave you, dude. For you today, alone, assertive, and ambivalent, that's our culture, but we were created for better than that. We are hardwired for community and its blessing. More on that tomorrow from the Apostle Paul. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.